a sound guy? Yes, we are on. We want to welcome you here on this very festive day. To the people joining us online, you are an important part of our Good Hope community. We thank you for joining us. Uh, and in this especially time of red level in Crawford County, we feel very, very, very privileged to be able to meet and gather together. But we follow our protocol strictly today, and everyone is asked to please wear your mask throughout the entire service, covering your nose and maintaining that uh, posture of always doing that. If you feel uncomfortable or you need a mask break, we ask you to go out into the auditorium. But we are doing this because we know COVID is alive and growing in our community. I have had several conversations with our public health department and some other churches have not been so fortunate as us. So we are asking you to please wear your mask throughout the service on this very special day so that we can continue meeting in person. Um, that is for the health and safety of all people. I talked to my dear friend, Pastor Sarah Shaw, who is dean of our conference, and I said, this is the most difficult time to serve in a church. And she said, yes, it is. She goes, the decisions aren't readily there, but the act of love is always there for Christians to be able to show this. And as we ask our children in schools to do this, we can do this too. So thank you. It is confirmation class. They are lined up and ready to go. I have not had the privilege to know them as long as you have. But in the short minutes and the stories of David, I feel so very blessed and given such hope in this world that these are the church of today. So we honor them this morning. We also are honoring Good Hope's 80 plus members at both services. The homecoming to come here and share your life experiences and walk in Jesus Christ. And for the 50 and 75 years ago confirmands, congratulations. That's a milestone, isn't it? To be able to know that the same words that these confirmands are saying today are the words you said 50 and 75 years ago. Uh, Christmas is coming for our compassion child in the Philippines. There's still time to give a gift today if you would like to let her family know that Good Hope is caring and thinking of them at Christmas. Some good news, next week we have a long weekend, one extra hour, and it happens on Saturday night, so make sure you set your clocks back. Otherwise, you will be very early. Uh, we will have All Saints Day observed on November 1st, 2020. We will lift up and remember those who have entered the church triumphant and whose services were officiated by God, Good Hope this year. They will be remembered at both the 8.30 and 10.45 a.m. services. We will celebrate Holy Communion in our parking lot on November 4th at noon. Please call the church office if you would like to attend. It's outdoor, it's safe, and we want to make sure Holy Communion is offered as many times as we possibly can give safely to those who don't feel comfortable coming into church. Um, with all of these things in mind, it is important to remember it is Reformation Day. And we have a special person who speaks fluently the German language. And so we have asked Jim, Pastor Jim Barkenquest to sing the first verse of A Mighty Fortress in German. Some years ago, I said to myself, if there's one thing you would like to do before you retire, what would you do? carry this up for me and hand it to me. I asked the great pastor, I see if that could be done. She smiled and said, yes. So, you're not going to tell the ghost of the mighty fortress to start talking to David. She stands as a 
my honor today to honor all of our uh, 50th and 75th anniversary uh, confirmation classes as well as our over 80 members. One of the milestones in our faith journey is being confirmed and becoming a member of the church. Today we honor not only our 2020 confirmands, but also those who celebrate the 50th and 75th anniversary of their confirmation. <clears throat> 
as I read your name, please stand if you are here or members of your family. The 75th confirmation class were confirmed March 25, 1945. The members who are deceased are James Malcolm Foster, Edward Eugene Gerhardt, John Frederick Heckenauer, Jack Ray Kennedy, Robert Wallace Lamb, Kenneth George L Lawyer, Arden Wayne L Lynn, Virginia Lee Marquis, Shirley Ann McKinley Hassler, Wanda Jean Reddick Lawhead, Francis Edith Sch Schillinger, Robert William Schnabel, Robert Charles Schwimley, Edwin Paul Steiger. Those who are living is, are Doris Marie All Anguish, who lives in Florida, Lowell Bennett Garverick, Margaret Ann Margroff Harris, who lives in Houston, Texas, Joseph Clara, Clarence Openlander, who lived in Vermont, and Helen Irene Scheffler Ross, who lives at Carlisle Place in Bucyrus. And I know her son and uh, daughter-in-law are both here this morning. In the, 20, in the 50th confirmation anniversary class, they were confirmed in 1970. Members who are deceased are Robert Earl Irwin, Eric Todd Prinstall, Marty Allen Sand, Deborah Lee Spade, and Earl Monroe Yerrick. The rest of the class includes Jim Randall Browsey, Lyle Clem, Charles Corey, Jill Amon, Tom Etzinger, who's up doing sound, Valerie Gubernoff Kirkpatrick, Bambi Dawn Hagerman Wright, Dawn Hybe Cheney, Gloria Nearman Pelfrey, Tim Timothy James Meister, he's back there, Larry Eugene Morton, Walt Puffinball, Curtis Paul Schiffer, Deborah K. Schiffer, Douglas Gordon Schiffer, Gary Ralph Schweitzer, Mark Douglas Sheely, and Michael Lynn Shaw. And then finally, we get to honor those of you who are 80 years old and over. What I did is I added up all the ages of our members, and I have 6,104 years of experience that these 80 and over members have had serving on committees, councils, choir, and all the things that make them faithful. So if you are over 80, please stand or wave. So please do that right now. Now, I know some of you are. There's it. All right, look around, everybody, because these are the people who have led us and who will uh, lay the future for us. So let's give everybody a round of applause and thank you. <laughs> Let us pray. We give thanks for our over 80 members and our confirmands. You have blessed us with their gifts in the faith journey of our Good Hope family. We now entrust each one of you to your loving care as they continue their journey in life. And we pray all of this in the Lord's name. Amen. What a celebration. And now let's begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And here is the absolution. God hears the cries of all who call out in need and through his death and resurrection. Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. 
Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. We sing the Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress, with our bell choir.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Are there any children that would like to come down for the message? guys doing today? Okay, you've gone with the uh, bank robber mask today, huh? Instead of the shield? I like it. It works. It works. Especially you, Lane. Who says what? Eagles? Okay. Well, Alan Burkhardt would be happy to see that. But anyhow, today we are talking about how God over and over and over again tries to get our attention. 
and shows us how he loves us. And you see those four young adults up there? Well, it's their confirmation day. And confirmation day is one way that, you, that God gets our attention. He does it in a lot of ways. Can you think of any ways that God gets your attention? Right? When you pray, when you pray yeah. Yeah, when you pray. How about you, Lane? Anything? Okay, well, I'm going to talk about how God gets our attention, not only from 1 to 10, but all the way to a, turn it up to 11. Okay? So, if I was to say, like, I love you, God loves you, what would that be, about a 1, 2, maybe? Two. Okay. And if, let's say, and that would be like seeing the beautiful colors when the fall changes, right? Okay, and then if I said like, God loves you, is that about, what do you think that is? Two? Okay. Yeah, and that could be like answering prayer, right? Well, I got some stuff to, so we can turn it up a little bit. So, let's say we turn it up to five, Okay. And what would five be, maybe? How about a rainbow? You know, you see a rainbow, you should always think of God's promise to us, right? So let's see how this works. God loves you! Is that better? Is that like a five? Okay. Well, let's turn it up to ten. See what happens. What would be a ten, you think? Huh? Well, yeah, a microphone might be a ten. Yeah. But, uh... Let's say, uh, well, creation. God created everything here. That's definitely a 10, and that should get our attentions, right? Let's see. God loves you! Okay. But we're going to turn it up to 11. Okay? And you were right. It's not 10. It's 11. So I got my supersonic number 11 microphone here. Okay? And what would be an 11? You know what 11 is? Jesus going to the cross and the empty tomb and him rising for us. That definitely gets our attention, doesn't it? And that's definitely 11. Okay? Are you ready for this? Hang on. God loves you! That's 11. Yeah. Okay. So that would get your attention. So you've got to be out. You've got to remember that God is always trying to get our attention to show us how much he loves us, okay? So we've got to just pay attention sometimes, right? So, are you going to, we're going to repeat after me a prayer. Maybe not quite in 11, but we'll make a little noise with it, okay? Okay, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all the ways you get our attention. For we know you love us, especially when we turn it to 11, through the cross and the empty tomb. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming down.
Thanks to you, Tom. You may be seated. grace through faith. And those words always get a little 
muddled, you know. We learn them in confirmation, right? But then we, start, we forget what it means to us in our life. And justification means it's just as if you never sinned. That's what it means. The God we hold our hope in forgets our sin. He sent his son to die for us on the cross and gave this gift of grace to us. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to do anything for it. We are justified by grace when we proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Savior and died on the cross for our sins. That is our gift to eternal life forever. That is a gift. That as long our lifetime we realize means everything to us. Right? When I was in confirmation quite a few years ago, not quite 50 yet, but I do remember I didn't really get it all because I was busy. I was a teenager. I was living my life and I just did the confirmation practice because my parents and because my grandparents and because my friends and my older sisters did it. And it was just a rite of passage. It was a milestone that you put on your life. You know, how you measure your height by those little clicks on the doorway of how high or tall you stood when you were three or five. Well, confirmation is when you are growing your heart and your minds in the faith of Jesus Christ. And this is a big one today, guys. It's a big one. Because what you have done is spent your time studying the words of Martin Luther. Because, you see, when he started this Reformation and, and the Lutheran churches started gathering all around, he did not want them to be called Lutherans. He did not want to leave the Roman Catholic Church. He just wanted to have a conversation. But he realized people didn't know what to say to their congregations. And so he wrote the small catechism for us to all learn by. And that's what you studied, right? The Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the sacraments. And then, it's, you don't just talk the talk, now it's time to walk the walk. And that's what you're doing here today. Now, I have not had this great privilege to be at Good Hope for a long time. And with this pandemic, it has been a challenge to even get to know who you are. But I know you're here, and I know that you believe in Jesus Christ. And so you are my family, and I am yours. But I did ask David to give me some insights about your confirmation experience and what he and Maggie have shared with you, these devoted servants that walked along with you. So here are some of his words, and I'll tell you, I was away at seminary classes this weekend. I sent this email out to David, and within one minute, this email came back. So this is prevalent. This is what was on his mind. So here we go. He said... It would be the stories of the fun we had at Luther Memorial Camp. It would be the night hikes, the scavenger hunts, the low ropes course. It would be finding ivy in a tree for no apparent reason, but he has pictures. <laughs> it would be Kenna who balances her busy life with sports and activities, but keeping confirmation important. It would be Ivy's discerning looks at David, who is I or Lily, excuse me, Lily, who is so quiet that her eyes can keep David on track. Am I right? <laughs> and then there's Kobe. And I wish I would have been here to see this, but he said at Lakeside you had an injured leg. And that you really thought even with that injury you could play basketball. But David kept you from injuring yourself. But you couldn't think about walking to that next class. That would be too hard. <laughs> These were wonderful stories. And it gave me the insight of what love looks like in the relationship of living in Christ among ourselves. And that is what the gospel is today. Jesus is saying to his disciples, when you continue with the word, you are truly my disciples. You will know me, and the truth will set you free. You see, when Jesus is standing in front of Pontius Pilate on those three days before the crucifixion, Jesus says, I am the truth. 
Jesus is the one who sets you free. And when you know Jesus, you know what freedom is. But those disciples had blinded eyes and go, Jesus, we're not slaves. You know, we're descendants of Abraham. We've never been slaves. And we, we say, we live in the United States of America. We know freedom. And Jesus says it's not that kind of freedom. Because we're all humans. And we are in bondage to sin, as we said in our confession. And we cannot free ourselves. Martin Luther said, you can't do it without God. No matter how much you want to love the Lord, you can't do it without God in you, in Christ, being saint and sinner at the same time. That is what the gospel is saying. When you believe in me, your life is free. The sin doesn't last forever because our home is with God eternally and forever. That is what the gospel is saying. But still, as young people, Living in this world of secularism, where materialism and everything draws our attention away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. How does this fit into our lives today? And there was a lot of wonderful material written for the 500th anniversary. Rolf Jacobson is one of the best scholars, and he said, you know... How do you fit it in? You realize that God's idea of Jesus was the best thing ever, right? Jesus was sent here to have a relationship with all the disciples and show us how to love God. And that is what the church is here to do, to show us how to love God, to get to know what is in this word, what is the message that God wants us to know. And that's where Lily's gift comes in strong. Lily, described as white, but she knows what's going on. She's discerning. She's thinking. She's abiding in Christ. And you have to give yourself that time to do that. You have to have some quiet time to really understand what is your relationship with Jesus Christ. And then you have to be like Ivy. When you see a tree climate, have a different perspective in your life, right? Look through the world through God's eyes. Because you cannot look at anyone, any person, that God did not create and love. And sometimes when you get higher up in that tree, you can see the world better. And you can understand that God put us here to love one another. To care about his creation. To show that in the way we live and ask forgiveness for that shortcoming that we always will have in sin. That every day we practice forgiving ourselves. We don't have to live in shame or guilt. But in the freedom of Jesus Christ to know we have tomorrow. We have this moment where God frees us from all of our sins. And isn't that the best gift ever? To know, yes, I have to face the consequences, but God forgives us always and then of course Kenna you're a person that shows a lot of balance and commitment and that takes a lot so to all of you young parents and the families that are trying to figure out how do you do church how do you do school how do you do life and keep it all in balance this is how you do it you can only be one place at a time but when you are anywhere you are 100% grounded in Jesus Christ. That's the balance. That everything you do in your life is 100% in the name of Jesus Christ. So when you're playing basketball or volleyball, or when you're at work and you don't have the time to come to church, when you're sick or when things just don't work out, you are still in Christ when you are 100% living in his name. That's the balance. And when you do everything in the name of Jesus Christ, we all benefit from it. Think of what the world would look like if we'd all lived that way. And that's why God gave us church. Because when we get off the path and come home, and Kobe, this leads me to you, that injury, that you wanted to do something to play that basketball game, and 
And David stopped you because he cared about you. He didn't want you to get injured more. And he encouraged you to do the discipline thing, to go to that class. You see, that is what confirmation, that is what being in church is all about, is that we keep others from doing what could injure you more. That we love you enough that we care. That we love each other, that we say, it's important to pray. It's important to say the Apostles' Creed. It's important to know your Jesus Christ and live in relationship. That's what we do. Now, yes, I know God is everywhere. But the reason you come to church is because God always shows up here. That's a given. And in the Lutheran theology, and the reason I love Lutheranism is because of what we do at worship. It is intentional. It walks you through it. You may not understand all the words, but once you do know them, and I'm teaching that in my Sunday school class, once you know them, you will love coming to worship. Because you gather, you sing, you pray, you confess, you're forgiven, you hear the word. And today we get to have holy communion. And when we sing that holy, 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 you know what we're saying? The heavens open. And all the communion of saints that we are taking communion with are here. God's space and time is not what we live here on earth. We are joined all together. What an awesome, awesome opportunity that is. We're, we're nourished, renewed, and sent out quickly, saying, go in peace, serve the Lord. Remember who you are. But the most important gift God gave us is he chose us. He made the first call on the phone. He called Abraham. He called Noah. He called Moses. None of them said, hey, God, let me lead the, the slaves out of Egypt because it's going to be fun. Moses did not say that. Moses said, okay, God, I'll try to do this. But you've got to listen. And you've got to be ready to hear God tell you where you're going. Because he chose you and he made each of you unique. So that when your boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you, when you go through a divorce, when life is hard, when you lose your job, when you get cut from a team, when your life seems empty and you don't have a purpose, God is saying, I'm here. And that's all you ever need. And that's the best promise, the best relationship you can have throughout your entire life. I heard this said, and I tell this story often because I think it's the best story to explain who God is to us. It starts with this dad who wanted to take his son fishing. Well, his son has never been fishing before. And he was about 10 years old and he said, can I bring a friend? And his dad said, Oh, sure. So they're out in this boat in the middle of a very calm lake in the morning, and they're fishing, and they're enjoying themselves. But then a storm quickly comes up, and they're far away from shore. And the waves start to rock the boat. And it gets so extremely rough sailing that the boat capsizes, and they all are thrown into the water. The father swims back to the boat but can only find one life preserver. His son is on the right, and his son's friend is on the left. They're both struggling to stay above the water. And the father looks at his son, who he loves, and he throws the life preserver to his son's friend and watched his son die. God chose you. He chose us. Thanks be to God.
All but the confirmands can be seated. We present these people who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Kenna Marie Caldwell. Kobe Wayne Knopfsinger. Lily K. Pfeiffer. Ivy Michelle Schiffer. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You have been baptized, and you have been taught the faith according to our Lord's bidding. The fulfillment of his bidding we now celebrate with thankful hearts, rejoicing to confess the faith into which you were baptized and which you yourselves will now confess before the church. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men I will, I will also confess before my Father, who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father, who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, Acknowledge the gifts which God gave you in your baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his Son, and in the Holy Spirit? Then proclaim your faith and trust in God with your family and this congregation in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church as you have learned to know from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession in church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to be a member of the Lutheran Church and of this congregation? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you 
will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give your hand as pledge of your promise and heal, kneel to receive the blessing. I'm going to lay it right here. Kenna Marie Caldwell. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Would you like to lay your hands on her? And we say, Amen. Kobe Wayne Knopfsinger. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Lily K. Pfeiffer. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to the life everlasting. Amen. I be Michelle Schiffer. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, each of you are asked to go to the lectern and to say your special Bible verse. I'm Kenna Caldwell, Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, and today, and forever. My name is Kobe Wayne Lobsinger. Isaiah 41.10 Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my vicious right hand. I'm Lily Pfeiffer, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Be on your guard, stand firm in the faith, be men of courage, be strong, and do everything in love. I'm Amy Schiffer, mine's Phones 32.9. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curved with a bit or bridle, or it will not stay near you. At this time, I want to acknowledge David Wolf and Maggie Everett, who have helped you through this process. Upon this year of profession and promise, I invite and welcome you as members of the Lutheran Church and this congregation to share with us in all the gifts our Lord has for his church and to live them out continually in his worship and service. Let us pray for the newly confirmed. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these your son and daughters to the knowledge of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing the fourth fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, confirmands, I think it is only proper that the Good Hope Church welcomes you into our community. Please turn around and address your, your family. Let us show a round of applause.
and you may proceed back to your seats at this time as we um, are ready to join the prayers of the faithful. Please rise. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all people and lands, recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially Charlie Bowers, Steve Hoover, Pastor John Kerr, Peggy Miller, Vi Wingate, Keith Young, Sarah Gephardt, and Sandy Stuckey. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who's free from sin and death, centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Confirming their vows in baptism, we welcome Kenna, Kobe, Lily, and Ivy into your body, your universal church, and this congregation. Awaken their spirit, assuring them, as you promise, that you will always be with them, guiding them in their journey in this world. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. During these trying times, hold closely those who have lost their struggle to march on, especially those who have succumbed to suicide, addiction, mental illness, and loneliness. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us the truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also. Please share the peace from your pews. Do not leave those and just enjoy looking around and sharing the peace.
please stand for the prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet, nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of the suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is my the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our serving of the Holy Eucharist will be done differently today. You will be released at your pew by the ushers. You will wear your mask until you are at the table. You simply pull your mask down and cup your hands. You will receive the, the wafer and then you will take it. You will receive the wine at this podium and be given a blessing. We have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available when you ask for them. And as you go through this, there is special music that will lead you through the whole communion process in the presence of Jesus Christ and you will exit the sanctuary, and you will be given the blessing to go in peace and serve the Lord. If you are unable to make it to the table, just remain in your seats, and we will come to you at the end. Christ comes to us in this real presence, in, with, and under the bread and wine to nourish the faith of Christians and the church. The invitation of this sacred meal that spans all time and space welcomes all believers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord look upon you and give you peace. Amen. Come taste and see 
the table has been prepared.